imagine a kitchen making 18,000 meals a day? Now imagine fighter jets landing on the roof, a heaving floor under your feet, and dry land a distant memory. Welcome aboard a culinary adventure somewhere in the Atlantic Ocean on the USS George Washington. share of adventures, but there's one place I've always wanted to go. Long before I became a chef, I dreamed of a high seas adventure. Anybody get air sick? Yeah, sometimes when it gets windy, we get pukers. Destination, one of the most powerful warships on the planet. mission to mentor young Navy cooks. Their mission, preparing over 18,000 meals a day. The USS George Washington. The US Navy routinely drops civilian chefs on the ships to help bring a little culinary creativity into the galleys. The program is called Adopt-A-Ship. This is amazing! I can't believe I'm standing on the deck of an aircraft carrier. This has got to be the coolest place my career as a chef has ever taken me. But I'm not just here for fun and games. I'm here to cook, to work with the cooks on board. But in the Navy, everything starts at the top. Captain, thank you. Good morning, Michael. Welcome aboard, sir. Thank you. I'm looking forward to meeting some of your cooks and the chefs. And yeah, how important would you say the food is on the ship? Well, it's part of nourishment and it's a part of morale down there. They have a, a nice environment and good food when they congregate down there in the United States. Because it really is a little city at sea out here. There's uh, 5,000 of us on this ship, and we all need to be uh, fed and watered. Any tips for me as I sort of get my sea legs out here? Just be a little careful, because this is a warship. Uh, you want to make sure you don't bump your head on anything, especially at your height. Don't, don't press any <laughs> red buttons or anything? Don't, that's right. I can't thank you enough. It's well, a it's... childhood dream come true. <laughs> Pure military precision, just like I've always imagined. But the cooks are below decks in a whole other world. I need to rapidly get a sense of where I am and where everything is before I can even start figuring out the size of the challenge. Michael Smith, good to meet you. Thank you. See you before Dave Webb. Welcome aboard. Please watch your head here. Yeah. You can see you're a little bit tall. We'll lead the way, and I'll watch okay. my head. This here is our aft galley. Okay. Uh, basically, this is our largest feeding area that we have on the ship. How many of these galleys are there? Uh, we have seven galleys on the ship. This right here is our forward galley. Basically, what we have here is this is designed for fast food items, so people can come in. Uh, hot dogs, hamburgers, chili dogs, French fries, onion rings, potato chips. This is one of the new things which we have a satellite bar where we'll either do a taco bar, we'll do a uh, starch bar as we go through. We'll do pasta also out here. That is a lot of choice, and that's available every day at every, every day. meal period? Every meal. We got a medical in here too, so there's our medical facilities down in here. This is wardrobe free. Okay, and as we come in here, this is where they, all the officers eat. And also the same food items that you'll find here, you'll find on the mess decks, the CO's mess, and also the Admiral's mess. So the captain of the ship is eating the same food the dishwasher is? That's correct. Really? Yes, sir. Didn't expect that. Chef, as we come down here, this is my main freezer. Ship stores? Yes, it is. Please watch your head here. As you can see, it's a little bit low. I'm going to watch my head everywhere on this ship. So I can hold up to about $2 million worth of food down in here. The sheer scale and scope of what it takes just to get the food on the ship, get it organized, get it ready to go to the kitchen. That's correct. It's mind-boggling. Right. Well, thanks for the tour. I feel like I got my head around where everything is now. My pleasure. I have to admit, I'm feeling a bit intimidated right now. This carrier is just as big as I thought it was, and it's hard to find your way around. But the kitchens, the galleys are enormous. They're feeding 18,000 people a day on here, and that's not really my skill set as a chef. 
Fortunately, I'm not the only chef who's adopted this ship. Hi. Michael Smith. Hi, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. This is the third ship I've been on, and I get to do this once a year, and uh, it's really fun. I love it. How do you think I can be most effective? What should I do? I think you need to find somebody who wants your help. Maybe get the chiefs to point out some of them, you know, because they know which are their strong cooks. It's one of my junior guys. Garcia, how are you doing? I'm Michael. Good to meet you. Is my reefer good? How are you doing? I'm Michael. Nice to meet you. David, is it? This is the chef. How are you doing, Michael? Michael. And he'll be working with us. Theo Jennings, is it? Yes. Nice to meet you. You having fun? You know, this right here is like overwhelming a little bit for me, but I just suck it up and continue doing the job. I'm not gonna lie, I mean, it's, it's tough. Well, thanks for showing me around. I'll, you know, I'll, I'll be here in the morning and see what we can get done. Always. Good stuff. Look forward to working with you. You bet. On board the USS George Washington as part of the US Navy's Adopt-A-Ship program. I'm charged with helping young cooks find ways to add a little flair and flavor to their rigid Navy recipes. It's always been a dream of mine to go on board an aircraft carrier, but I've only ever seen these from the outside, so I've really only ever been able to imagine what life is like on board the ship. It's pretty challenging, especially for the cooks. Consider the numbers. On board, there are 6,000 sailors. That's 18,000 meals a day, 6.5 million a year. And to make it all happen, just 43 cooks working 24-7. Oh, 0400. Stand by to receive shot lines. Forward of midships and the bake shop's already in full swing, making and delivering the gift that is traditionally given to any resupply vessel that comes alongside at sea. Come on, get ready to release the roll. Stop sign, take cover. We're taking on jet fuel, they're taking on cherry turnovers. 0500, the bakers have a daily list of special cakes to make. Out here, a little bit of icing goes a long way. 0600. They may be cooks, but they're Navy first. And those who've gone before me defend freedom and democracy around the world. How about faith? 0700. Breakfast is in full swing, and I'm starting to wonder where the cooks will find the time to tread water, let alone swim ahead with me. I think the best way to get started, see how I can be useful, is simply to get a plate full of food and some breakfast. How's breakfast? I'm actually on the ship because of this program called Adopt-A-Ship. So it's sort of chefs on shore that come out onto the ship and work with the CSs in the kitchen. Anything you think I should work on with these guys? Maybe the meat. I like the chicken, but like the hamburger and the steaks and stuff, it has a weird flavor to me, so I don't generally eat meat on the ship. Yeah. It's good to meet y'all. Thanks. Not a bad breakfast. My first impressions are pretty good. Nothing special, really. I mean, just mass-produced flavor. But... Chef Michael reporting for duty. Hey. What's on the menu today? Uh, today we have barbecue beef cubes, and we also have tuna tetrazzini. Well, let's All get right. to work. So which one of the guys are working on this? I'll work with them, I guess. CSC Frazier is working on it, and uh, okay. CSC Mosby as well. So you're prepping 750 portions of tuna tetrazzini. So let's see if we can't okay. uh, jazz this up a bit. OK. Is that cool? All right, Chuck. OK, what's going in first? Sauteed vegetables. All these onions and peppers. I was looking at your card there. I was thinking there's a couple things we could do to upgrade the flavor. Are you cool with that? You're sort of making a sauce off on one side, right? Yeah, yeah and then that's going to get stirred into here? Yes, sir. So what we could do then is we could add the, the mustard to the sauce. We'll give that a mustard flavor. Sound good to you? Whoever, whatever works for you is all good by me. You can add flavor to it and make it more better. It, it was kind of cool. I, I came into it a bit late, and well, they were completely open to it. But at the same time, set in their ways. We may even want some more mustard. Yeah, I think we do. It's a big match. You want to try throwing some dill in today? Because people tend to like the flavor of dill. It's, especially with fish. Yeah, especially with fish. Awesome. It's such a monolithic operation. Mm -hmm. and, and just trying to get it to turn just a little bit is an enormous achievement. 
it's small remarks every day. Every day they, they, the, the crew has something to say about it, but we still do our job. They still eat it. So it's a lose-lose situation, basically. So you know what I'm saying to myself right now is, all right, I'm going to serve this up. I'm adding mustard. I'm adding dill. Can I taste the mustard in the dill? Because there's no sense in adding just a little bit. And at the moment, I'm not really tasting that mustard, are you? No. The dill's there for sure. I'd say let's add some more mustard. All right, in goes the tuna. You got lots of salt in that water? Mm. Not yeah. too much, not too much. The thing to do is taste that water. Taste it. And you'll know you got the right amount of salt when it actually tastes like the ocean. It's not fine dining, you know? No, I know, yeah. and I understand that. It's just cooking. Salt in the pasta water, that's all. If you can leave that kind of stuff behind, sure. that's worth the price of admission right there. The only thing it was missing was a little bit of salt other than that. It was great. Uh, I got the turkey tetrazzini. It's tuna, not turkey. <laughs> It's good. It's got a little dill in it, a little vegetables, onions. So how's dinner shaping up tonight? We've got lots of crab legs, friends. They're going to be happy. We won't. That's a lot of work, huh? the aircraft carrier USS George Washington as part of the Adopt-A-Ship program. Civilian chefs mentoring young Navy cooks. Today is our last day at sea. On deck, the fighter squadron scrambles. While below decks, the cooks are breaking out the good stuff for tonight's traditional homecoming feast. You always have a special meal. You may have steak and you may have lobster, something that the supply officer has kept in reserve and only brought out for the last day. And, and it's a way to have that last bit of camaraderie together as a crew. Tonight, there will be no more French fries, cheeseburgers, or macaroni. It's steak, lobster, and shrimp all around. You know, everybody on this ship, from the captain right down to the dishwashers, up and down the chain of command, everybody eats exactly the same thing. From what I hear, things are a little bit fancier upstairs in the Admiral's dining room. Gentlemen. Howdy. How long have you been part of the Admiral's team? Almost three years. You get to do some pretty neat stuff, right? Eh? Yeah. You can try different things. Sure. So try different recipes. But at the end of the day, it's still the same food that they're eating downstairs, isn't it? It's just prepared a little differently from down below. Hey, everybody, let's grab seats and get something to eat. It's almost a, a part of diplomacy in that when we go to other countries, the things that you serve them, uh, what you have for the surroundings of the discussion and the food that goes with that is very important. If it puts them at ease and, and it puts us at ease, then the food becomes a common problem. What's the best part about being up here in the Admiral's Gallery? The best part is that uh, you have a chance to go to school. I've been to a uh, Culinary Institute of America. There's some perks that go with this job. That is true. What do you got there? This is the sauce reduction. Maybe there'll be a little bit of juice down at the I bottom here. You can add that in, yes, too. Yes, that's correct. Actually, I did that already. Uh -huh. When I seared the meat, I put some sweet juice on the sauce. OK. Every drop of flavor is going in. <laughs> It'll be worth it. Yeah, I'll do your lobsters for you. I'll take plates right here. Thank you. So you want one of those right on top of the lobster? Well, is there going to be room for that potato? Maybe if you put the potatoes on uh, ahead of the meat, you can lean the meat up on top of the potato. Yes. Let's put the potato right here, Chief. Bring the veggies down to the bottom, potato next, then you got room for that meat. You can lean the meat up on top of the potato. OK, we got that plate figured out, and we're off. Okay, uh... Give me a spatula, please. Are, are they sticking on you? Would it help if you took a small knife and ran it all the way around? Or? Usually usually the first one gets mucked up, and every one after that is not so bad. Uh, we'll make that look pretty again. Call it fresh baked pot. It's amazing how you can change everybody's perception of something just by changing the name. 
truly, we, we thank you so much. We take for granted uh, the, the food that we get, but I'll tell you that you can never take it for granted because it's part of the heart and the soul of the ship is the food uh, that, that we are blessed to be able to, to eat. There. I discovered as I was walking around that the Admiral in his wardrobe they get table service. They're plating multiple course meals and yeah. serving them to them. And I'm well, not... I don't usually like to spend time in the wardroom at all. I hear you. They, I hear you. They get everything they need. They are yeah. fine. And, and not just that. I mean, there's there's 5,500 sailors on board. 5,400 of them are, are eating down in here with the general messes. That's that's where we can do the most good. That's true. Back to basics. That's where I'm going. See yes, Sanchez. You ready to make some trim scampi? Right. After a seven month tour of duty in the North Atlantic, it's the last day at sea for the USS George Washington. I'm here to teach, but at sea there's a huge gap between my creative chef's approach to food and the Navy's standard approach. At lunch, I'm not sure that C.S. Fraser, C.S. Mosley, and I made any headway. If I want to leave anything behind, I need a new approach. C.S. Sanchez, you ready to make some shrimp scampi? Uh, yeah, I'm just going to do that in this pocket right here. You know what I think we should do? I think we fold this up, put that in your pocket. I agree. We don't need that paper. Sure and let's just make a really nice Italian scented shrimp sauce and serve it over rice. All right. All right. The way the Navy works, you have to follow the recipe card. You can't give it kind of your own taste, and that's one thing I don't like about it. What do you think the key is to making a dish like this? A dish really, uh, honestly, to me, it's like a lot of butter and garlic. A lot of butter and a lot of garlic, yeah. spoken like a chef. I don't want to just be a chef somewhere, like at some restaurant. I want to have my own place. That would be like my ultimate goal. I suspect we might need more tomatoes than just the four. Yeah, now, yeah, now we will. There's no olive oil, is there? Let me check. I think I see some virgin olive oil in there. If we got olive oil, that would be the thing to start with. Any luck? Uh, we, I couldn't find no olive oil. I just got some vinegar since we have uh, the lemon. Okay. So right now I'm just going to transfer that butter to this copper over here. All right. I don't know if you would agree with me, but I think uh, draining some of this juice would be wise. It's okay for this to be sauce-like, as long as we thicken I'm it cheated. up. I guess I won't get in trouble with this says I just tell the chef, told me, I will go ahead and add the tomatoes. Yeah, no, I think you're right. Let's do it. We're definitely adding a lot of juice here, and it's okay to do that, as long as we then do something to thicken it up. All right, here comes the paste. Concentrated tomato flavor. I'm gonna rinse some of your dry spices, right? Add them towards the end because they take most of the flavor. Is that right? Actually, no, the reverse. When you're using dried herbs in general, mm -hmm. better to give it some cooking time okay. because you gotta sort of bloom that flavor. Yeah, that's, that's what I used to think. I don't know where I read that. It might have been a recipe card, matter of fact. Yeah. This smells great. It, it smells really good. How much garlic are you gonna add? Uh, well, we're gonna go ahead and use all of this garlic we got right here. Awesome. So, not according to recipe card, but we can do this. Yeah. I think that's what we have here. What do you think? Actually, the garlic seems to be fine. Um, a little bit more oregano, I would think. But let me find that salt real quick. So once we add the milk, just some more liquid added into it, how would you thicken it up? Well, I'm, I'm not proposing to actually add milk. I suggest yeah. what we do is add just milk the powder. powder. The add powder. that, the richness. There's a lot of fat in that powder. It's gonna add richness and flavor to it. Is that the slurry? Yes. So you're basically just dissolving flour and water? Yes, pretty much. Yeah, pretty much. Pretty much. I think that's as far as I want to take with the slurry. And like you said, it'll thicken, it'll keep thickening up, so it should be fine by the time the first customer comes to the line. Sometimes the best is just the best you can do without taking too many risks. That way, you know, I don't want to get yelled at. And then, of course, I want to give them the best that we can, so that's what we try to do. 
I'm a big seafood fan, so I, I have no problems with any of it. I like it. That's good. That's really good. It's actually good. It's got a good flavor. You know, a guy like you, 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 you're obviously into it, you're passionate, you're confident. I mean, to step up to that kettle and make shrimp for a thousand people, put that piece of paper, that recipe in your pocket while you're doing it, that's confidence, you know? <laughs> so you can do it. Hey, I really hope, wish a couple of years from now I can say that I did do it. You see that? You'll be fine. <laughs> no question about it. You know, these cooks are motivated by a whole lot of different things. Definitely by the clock. They got to hit the mark. Definitely by the infinite command structure above their heads. But I think the one thing that impresses me the most is that all these cooks are motivated to do the best job they can for their fellow shipmates. They all understand that all it takes to make people happy out here is a tasty meal. I respect that.